time to get the rear end in the car. I've got a bunch of full tilt boogie racing stuff that's just been waiting to go in, uh, which will significantly improve the IRS. So lots of really good stuff here. Uh, I've got the full tilt FT5001 bushing kit. Uh, and that's for all the control arms, the differential, and the IRS cradle. The IRS cradle bushings were already installed a long time ago, so they're obviously not laid out here. I've got this beautiful Ford Racing reinforced differential cover here that's already milled for the full tilt lowering differential mount. I also have new rear bearings from Ford Racing and then just some new OEM wheel studs. These here are just grease fittings that I'll have to drill and tap into the control arms for the control arm bushings. New rear camber bolts from Full Tilt as well that give you a bit more camber adjustment over the factory bolts. This is the Full Tilt upgraded tow link kit. As well as the sway bar end link kit. And these are just OEM retaining nuts for the half shafts. They replaced the factory non-reusable nuts that originally came on this car. Uh, those were really expensive. Like they're like $70 a nut, uh, which is outrageous, but I think they discontinued those and these new ones are like seven bucks each. Small win there because yeah, overall this stuff is not cheap. I think it's well over 1600 or so US dollars in components here, but it should make the IRS perform a lot better. So yeah, time to get it all on. So here I've got the differential mating surface all cleaned up as best as I could. I just used some brake cleaner and a rag initially. And then I took a really fine gray scuff pad and tried to clean it up some more. There are two spots where I found a round indentation mark. Not sure if this was opened up before, but it's very minor and I don't think it'll mess up the seal. It wasn't leaking before with the old RTV on there. But yeah, other than that, everything looks really good. I decided to get a lube locker gasket instead of going the RTV route. This one is a pre-fitted gasket. I've heard really good things about these. Uh, they supposedly don't leak. There's no mess, obviously, and it's a quick install. If it does leak, I can just take it off in a couple minutes. If it was RTV and it leaked, I'd have to take it all off and clean everything off again and then basically start all over. These IRS covers can be tricky since they are load bearing, so it's important to get a good even seal. Funny enough, Full Tilt specifically mentioned not to use gaskets in the install, but I'm going to take my chances anyway because I think it'll work just fine. That's just me. The new differential girdle comes with uh, new bolts, and since the girdle is quite a bit thicker, it looks like the supplied bolts are longer than the factory bolts. These adjustable load bolts here press up against the differential bearing caps. And help support them when you torque the studs down.
So I've got some of the plugs sealed off with some Loctite sealer. Uh, these two here for an oil cooler, which I'm not using. This is the fill plug where you put in your fluid. On this side here is the fill level plug that tells you when to stop filling. The fill plug and the fill level plug will obviously be sealed off last because you still have to put the fluid in. All right, I've got the housing pretty leveled out and ready to put some new fluid in. Uh, I went with AMSOIL because it's just really good stuff in my opinion. Uh, I'm going to mix in two ounces of the slip lock friction modifier in with the diff oil and then fill it up until that fill level port starts spewing fluid out. Alright, so here are my upper and lower control arms for the IRS. Uh, I went a little crazy and decided to get them sandblasted and powder coated in a chrome finish. Uh, I think they look awesome. Uh, a little chrome never hurt nobody. For the lower control arms, this is actually my second set. The first set, the original control arms off the 04 Cobra, never came back from the powder coater. Long story short, this powder coater used an out of house sandblaster and they somehow disappeared over there. I went to go pick up all my parts and poof, they were gone. One guy blamed the other. Eventually the powder coater did make it right, but it sucked because I had to go find new control arms. I had to clean them up and take out all the bushings again. But yeah, anyways, that was a long time ago and it's all good now. Um, I've had these refinished and ready to go for a while. So it's finally time to get them back on the car. First, I have to install these grease fittings for the full tilt bushings that are going in. Basically two fittings per control arm. I do recommend them to be installed a certain way, so I'm going to go double check that quickly and then try and get them drilled and tapped in. I drilled out the holes for the grease fittings on all of the eyelets. And now just have to tap and thread the fittings in. I also deburred and smoothed out any jagged metal on the inside of the eyelets. To prevent any marring on the bushings. Thank you. 
Here's the upper Delrin bushing. Had them in the freezer to get them to go in a little easier. You'll notice the little groove in the middle. That's for the grease to disperse and lubricate the bushings. For the lower control arms, the bottom side of one eyelet gets a straight grease fitting, like this. And then the other eyelet gets a 90 degree fitting that goes on the top side, like that. On the lower arms, there are two bushings per side and they have a little gap between them to create a small channel for the grease to go. So it's important to get the fitting in the middle in between the two bushings in that channel. Here's the IRS cradle, and it's looking pretty nice, I must say. I already installed the full tilt bushings on there ages ago. Next up, I'm going to get all the control arms on there for good and just keep the process moving along. Full tilt states that the control arm buckets may be a little tight and may need to be stretched out a bit, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> The lower control arms require these three washers in between the buckets, which would be a pretty tough task without widening the buckets first, so I would definitely recommend that.
thing was getting way too heavy, so I moved things around to get it down on the ground on some dollies, especially since it's going to get a lot heavier with the next round of components. And that's got me thinking how much of a pain this thing's going to be to put back in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a base on top of these dollies here. That way I can roll it around, get two jacks on it from either side, balance the IRS on the base, and lift it up slowly. That's the plan at least. If you get any grease on the bolt threads like I did, make sure you clean it thoroughly. That'll definitely affect the accuracy of the torque numbers you think you're applying. I've got the diff housing fairly loose in position. As you can see, it's not mounted here in the back. I do have it connected in the front very loosely. Full tilt recommends getting the maximum pinion angle possible. The full tilt kit comes with a stack of these solid bushings. This one slots into the frame on the IRS and has a concave side. This is the bushing with the convex side. And this is kind of how it fits together. So the bushings fit together nicely and are able to move around and self-adjust. And then it also comes with a bunch of stacking washers to push this thing up as high as possible. I was able to get the maximum amount of washers in there with enough clearance between the housing and the IRS brackets, so there was no shaving necessary to fit in all the washers.
To get the half shafts in any further, I'm gonna need to get the impact. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna zip it until it gets through most of the way and is snug. Then I'll torque it down to uh, 240 foot pounds when it's on the car.
Okay, so here's the rear coilover setup I'll be running on the Celine. It's the Maximum Motorsports Sports Series shocks and coilover kit. The spring rate is 600 on the coils. And the shocks themselves are Bilstein's, but I think Maximum does their own thing to them and revalves them. This will just be the starting point. The ride's supposed to be firm yet streetable. And I like the fact that it is a true coilover shock in the rear rather than uh, utilizing a coilover design in the spring perch like most other kits. If the ride turns out to be too soft for my liking, I'll try the MM2s, which are supposed to be much more firm and aggressive, but I'd prefer to experience it progressively. Start at a baseline with these and go from there. Anyways, there's not much to it. The kit comes with all the bushings and hardware. The shocks are already grooved by maximum to accept the sleeves. And it also comes with the lower eyelet bushings and sleeve, which still have to be installed. So I'll get started by pressing the bushings in and then get the coil and sleeve on there. For now, I'm not too worried about any fine tuning. The goal is just to get it on the car and get it rolling over to paint.
All right, the IRS is in. My main goal was just to get it installed so I can get the car rolling to paint. It still needs to be properly set up and sorted out. I still need to replace the old brake pads and also install the stainless braided lines that I have. The old SVT rotors were in good shape and I just gave them a quick recoat for now. But yeah, everything is in and it's gonna do what I need it to do for now. I also quickly put together the front suspension on the car. This was thrown on so I could just get the wheels on and get the car rolling for paint. I won't be using any of this stuff other than maybe the rotors and the Cobra R Brembo's that came with this car. I also put some padding in between a couple of areas to try not to scratch anything. Like between the K-member and frame. And also the top strut plates. I do have a full Maximum Motorsports front suspension setup going on Celine. So that'll be a nice upgrade once it's in with the engine. I also hooked up the steering rack. The fuel lines are in, the brake lines are in, the e-brake is in. Once I throw some wheels on, it'll be the first time this thing rolls on its own in like five years. Crazy. I guess I should mention just to refresh, it's going to the body shop to get the engine bay and entire chassis painted. It's been a long time coming. There's still plenty to do, but man, it's a huge step for me.